good morning all of you so welcome to the next session on propagation radio propagation in the last class we have seen we have derived the equation for the line of sight distance between the transmitter and the receiver in today's session we will be finding out uh, we will be deriving the equation for electro electrical field strength at a particular at the receiver for the effective electrical field strength we may get problems based on this and then we'll be looking into what is ionospheric uh, propagation and so on so i have included the first slide that is what we have seen in the previous one we have this height r1 r2 and We have R1 is a distance travelled by the ray that is being transmitted directly. We have R2, which is another way ray that is being reflected from the ground. We have the HT as the height of the transmitter, HR as the height of the receiver, antenna, and D is the distance between them. So the phase difference between the direct and the ground reflected wave that is. we have a wave here once it hits this ground it changes its phase so the phase difference between the ground and the uh, direct wave that is the wave that is coming directly to the receiver and the wave that is coming after being hit from the ground we have a phase difference this phase difference is given by phi is equal to 4 pi ht hr by lambda d where we know that the lambda is the wavelength of the transmitted wave d is the distance between the antennas ht is the height of the antenna transmitted antenna and hr is the height of the reflected antenna respectively now what happens to the total electric field that is e r we denote the effective resultant electric field by e r what would be e r e r will be given as e not plus e not into e raised to j phi where this phi denotes the total phase difference we have a phase difference so we have two e notes this is the effective uh, resultant um, wave the electric field strength due to the direct wave and when it is reflected you have a phase difference we call it as phi the total phase difference we are representing it by phi okay syllabus also you may get questions also so the effective resultant er is given by e not this is for, from the direct wave this is from the reflected one okay one by d because e not we are taking it as per unit okay one unit you can take one unit then when it is uh, multiplied by the entire taken for the entire distance we will have it as e not by d so we are taking this e not out and we know that this phi the total phase will be 180 plus phi okay so in that case the effective er is given by 1 by d e not 1 minus cos phi plus sin phi right e raised to minus j phi this one is nothing but 180 plus the phase difference between both the direct and the reflected waves Okay.
So on expanding this, what we get is 1 by d e naught 1 minus, we are taking this as cos phi and sin phi. Sin phi minus cos phi. Since there is a minus sign here, we get it as minus cos phi plus sin phi. Now we are taking the modulus to find out the effective ER. Effective electric field ER will then be given as 1 by d e naught into root 1 minus cos phi the whole square plus sin square phi. You know how this equation came? This one. We are taking the effective modulus. Okay. Now on solving this using trigonometric, what we'll get? We'll get this as we'll get this as one one minus cos one plus cos square phi plus two I'm sorry minus minus 2 cos phi plus sin square phi. This both will give 1, right? So what we'll get? We'll get root of root of 2 minus 2 cos phi. This 2 you can take it outside. 2 into 1 minus cos phi root. That is what is 2 sin square sin square phi by 2. Right? So what we will get? So what we'll get? Root of 2 into 2 sin square phi by 2. This 2 and 2 will be outside, so you'll get 2 e d 2 e naught by d sin phi by 2. So this is the effective electric the resultant electric field at the receiver end. Now we know that the value of D is much much higher, uh, greater than HT or HR. So in that case we will substitute the value for phi what we have derived in the, what we have written in the first one. The value of phi is equal to 4 pi HT HR by lambda d. We will substitute the value of phi here. So we will get 2 phi ht hr by lambda d. Now since it is very d is very very high what we can do sin theta we are approximating as usually what we do is that sin theta is approximated to theta right. So here we get this value for the effective resultant electric field as 4 pi ht hr by lambda d square into e naught. Is that clear for all of you? Any doubts or any clarification you can ask me now? Is my screen properly visible? Are you all there? So now we have seen that the effective electric field ER 
is given by 4 pi ht hr by lambda d square into e naught. When you are asked to find out the range of a communication system and you are given the electric field E naught that is due to direct and you are asked to find the effective radius, effective uh, resultant electric field, then you need to apply this formula to get the field strength. Is that clear, all of you? So there is another one equation when you have effective radiated power, that is the power that is being transmitted at the transmitters and if you know that, we will be able to find out, sorry this is ER, okay. E naught, this, this is ER, ER is given by 4 pi ht hr by lambda d square, the value of 4 pi is 12.76, E naught is given by 7 into root of P, where P stands for the effective radiated power. So when you multiply 12.56 into 7, you will get 87.96, approximately you can take it as 88, 88 hr ht root P by lambda d square. So this is the equation for the resultant electric field in terms of the effective radiated power in watts. Okay. So I wish all of you, is it done? So I believe you understood how to find out the resultant, this one, resultant electric field when you get, when you are given the radiated power. There is a problem in your syllabus that is uh, about the cause outcomes, you know, you can see that in your syllabus there is a problem related to this in your syllabus. You can uh, substitute these values which is given, the effective radiated power is given, the height of the transmitting reserve and you are asked to find out D. So D square will be equal to 88 ht hr by hr root P by lambda into ER. Okay. So next topic, something that we have left in the previous itself is about plane earth reflection. If an EM wave is incident at an angle theta into finite conductivity smooth earth surface, the magnitude and the phase of the reflected wave can be determined by considering the as a reflection at the surface of a perfect dielectric. So we are considering the earth to be a perfect dielectric uh, in case of uh, ground wave reflected uh, waves. So when the earth is rough, the reflected wave tends to be scattered and the reduction in amplitude comparably is comparably higher than the reflection from the smooth surface. So how we'll have, we need to find out a distribution in such a way that you have, uh, you, can, you can estimate the roughness of the earth. The roughness of the earth is estimated by a Rayleigh criterion and it is given by R is equal to 4 pi sigma sin phi by lambda where sigma is the standard deviation of surface irregularities relative to mean surface. Phi is the angle of incidence measured from the grazing angle and lambda is the operating wavelength. This is a measure of roughness.
so when r is small no, there is the surface is relatively smooth and when r is higher when r increases uh, i mean r is less than 0.1 we assume that the earth is very smooth and when r is greater than 10 we assume that the surface is very rough depending upon the magnitude of r we assume the smoothness of the earth so let us find out what is the equivalent complex dielectric constant so when let the earth's finite conductivity be denoted as sigma and the dielectric constant er then the effective equivalent complex dielectric field that is you have a change in dielectric field we call, we consider that to be epsilon dash which is equal to er plus sigma by j w okay the definition actually definition for an for equivalent complex dielectric constant so for an isotropic radiator above the plane or the electric field intensity e is given as e is equal to e not into 1 plus r h r h is a reflection coefficient whose derivation is there in the textbook but i'm not going to take that in detail because we don't have enough time or it's not in the mentioned in this syllabus explicitly e not is the field strength for the free space propagation e j delta plus 1 minus r h into f e raised to j delta and so on so this is a particular video that i have taken from uh, the nasa website here this illustrates the electromagnetic spectrum you can see that the frequency of radio waves microwave it is increasing infrared it is increasing this is a wavelength so wavelength decreases with frequency you know this the basic principle so this video is simply to make you understand that what happens to the wavelength when a electromagnetic signal hits the uh, ground or hits any surface see this wavelength here when the wavelength is larger the frequency is less because the number of signals per second or the number of ups and downs per second gets reduced so this is a uh, video that i have taken from nasa website which demonstrates the Uh, relationship between frequency and different shows about different bands the frequency bands that begin with radio waves and that ends up with gamma waves which are very very high frequency okay so this is another one illustration which also i have taken from wikipedia and i have given the credits here also see here is the atmospheric layers this is the troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and so on this is the wave uh, here x so this is troposphere stratosphere mesosphere thermosphere and so on the shorter the waves shorter waves means higher frequency gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays and this is the visible radiation infrared ir microwave radiations and the longer waves the wavelengths are longer for radio waves right so we have radio waves capable of penetrating into much higher levels we have gamma ray shorter waves we have this this is the uh, this marks the shows the capability of the waves to enter into the particular sphere uh and this shows the top bar the top 
axis shows the wavelength or the inverse that is the frequency of the waves that can penetrate okay is that clear for you so this is the electromagnetic spectrum this is also taken from another website i think it is nasa the previous one was from wikipedia and that video was from nasa see the radio waves you know you have a longer wavelength lambda but shorter frequency as it keeps going on we have the frequency increasing increasing and one particular stage we have the very very high frequency waves we call it as gamma rays so we have medium infrared rays infrared rays we use it for our uh, we use it in for our short range communication we have radio waves we have microwaves and so on this so the longer the wavelength we give we get more capacity to incorporate more information okay next we are going to understand what is tropospheric propagation and what are the features that affect the tropospheric propagation the troposphere is the lowest earth layer in the atmosphere of the earth it contains 80% of the total mass of the planetary atmosphere and 99% of the total mass of water vapor and aerosols and is where most weather phenomena occur the tropospheric region extends from the surface of the earth to a height of about 6 km at the pole and 18 km at the equator so troposphere is the lowest layer and what happens is that almost all variations that happens in the ground happens throughout the troposphere whether it is the temperature or the variations in terrain or whether it is the amount of see the amount of water humidity varies from point to point from different areas in the uh, earth no it it varies similarly the amount of the density the pressure everything there is a change you know suppose you see we have a very hot temperature here right now so what happens is that there is a less dense air there is no lesser water water vapor and so on if the humidity is higher it's still fine but still you have uh, these uh, characteristics varying from point to point in different points of the earth so all these things are going to affect our electromagnetic communication whenever we try to transmit a electromagnetic signal from a transmitter to receiver we have seen in the previous session the four important things now the height of the transmitter receiver the terrain and the weather conditions in the uh, area of transmission so what happens when a wave is being transmitted from this particular point to here what happens is that in certain areas now high very high frequencies what happens is that the signal that is being transmitted from this point gets transmitted and it escapes to the outermost layer where low frequency waves you get reflected here sir, at high frequency also there are certain waves which get reflected in the ionosphere and reach see this the range depends upon the other factors also what are the, these factors we will be studying in detail so we need to understand that higher the frequency the probability of the waves going high is more because you have more energy higher frequency means there is more 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 number of ups and downs in a particular second so you mean that the power or the energy is higher the higher the frequency the higher the energy is and so what happens is that it has the capacity to go more distance lower the frequency what happens is that at one particular stage it gets hit and reflected back so this is a diagrammatic representation this is called a skip distance what is skip distance we will be studying as we go on and what happens when a wave is being transmitted from one point to the other frequency is lower it gets reflected frequency is higher you have the possibility of the wave escaping outside also we have Uh, depending upon the frequency we have different kinds of waves that is being transmitted and dif at a different distance can be, can be received so in tropospheric 
propagation or in troposphere the relative dielectric constant is slightly higher than unity due to the presence of atmosphere and in particular water vapor the typical value of epsilon or the permittivity dielectric constant at the surface of earth is found to be 1.0057 and for all the previous calculations whatever we have done we will be as we have estimated the value of the dielectric constant of earth to be 1 Okay, this value decreases as a function of height above the surface of earth. As we go higher and higher, this value gets decreased. So this is what this is the different layers of the Earth's atmosphere. This is what happens in the troposphere. Then ozone. Here, this layer is called the ionosphere, where we get more number of waves to get reflected because there we have ionized air we have electrically charged particles in the ionosphere okay so in this particular module or in this particular part of this section we will be studying a tropospheric propagation what happens with tropospheric propagation so as discussed earlier the relative dielectric constant is a function of temperature pressure and humidity Tropospheric propagated signals are directly affected by weather conditions extending over uh, some hundreds of miles. As you know, as we go on, as we the weather condition also keeps changing as we go on from one point to the other. There is a lot of uh, changes in density. What happens is that whenever we travel from a warmer to a cooler atmosphere, what happens? There is a lot of changes that the refractive index of the uh, medium is getting changed. There are so many other things that affect the electromagnetic uh, communication, electromagnetic signals. They make a lot of changes. We'll see what they are as we go on. So this is another one important figure that shows the absorption bands in the Earth's atmosphere that what happens to the, see how far the uh, electric intensity, the um, uh, transmitted signal is being absorbed. There are chances that the signals do not uh, go beyond a particular level at all. So this particular figure shows the absorption bands in the Earth's atmosphere and the effect that this particular thing has on the both solar radiation and the upcoming thermal radiation. Individual absorption spectrum for major greenhouse gases plus the Rayland scattering are shown in the lower panel. This partner, these are the components of absorption, atmospheric absorption, electric intensity, the radiation from sun to earth, radiation from earth to space, and you have different frequency waves that is being transmitted. So next important concept what we are going to study is about the warm air region. When let us consider a cold air mass and a warm air region. There is a duct that is formed between this warm air and the cold air. Because that means that an electromagnetic signal here the density is much lower, low density. Here the density is higher, high density. What happens? There is a change in refractive index. So what happens is that the signal is getting reflected here and it gets trapped in between in this region. This region is called as duct. So this is a type of tropospheric propagation. This does not happen every time. This happens in a condition where we have a signal that is passing from a cold air mass to a very warm air mass. So in this condition we have this signal, electromagnetic signal that is being trapped in between the cold and the air regions. This is called as the trapped region. This trapped region is called as duct. Okay. So tropospheric duct, duct propagation. Instead of gradual changes in the atmospheric conditions, sometimes distinct regions are formed and regions have that have highly have significantly different densities try to bend radio waves passing between the region. What we have seen in the previous slide, you know, we have a region here like this and this is high this is low density or something or this is high density you have changes in this so what happens is that the signal gets trapped this region is called as duct 
a non homogeneous atmosphere whose index of refraction decreases with height rays of sufficiently small initial elevation angle are refracted downward with a curvature proportional to the rate of decrease of the index of refraction with height so what happens is that this particular phenomenon produces this duct the radius of curvature if this particular radius of curvature is less than the radius of earth such rays reach a maximum height and are confined or trapped between this height and the earth surface this phenomenon is referred to as trapping and that region is called as duct this is because of the analogy of wave guide propagation so in case you have this radius of curvature this radius of curvature less than that of the earth so you have this like this and you have a smaller one in that case only trapping and duct occurs and that not only that you have some other conditions like about the change in temperature or change in weather conditions from one point to the other a duct may be defined as an atmospheric structure that traps rays within a few minutes of arc of the astronomical horizon astronomical horizon is a comparatively new new term so that they cannot escape from the atmosphere but are periodically bent back down so as to follow the curvature of earth so this is what is duct this is also a diagrammatic representation which you can draw in the exams when you are asked for an explanation with diagram tropospheric duct duct propagation in this there is one definition that you have to study that is modified refractive index which is defined as m which is equal to n minus 1 plus h by r not into 10 raised to 6 where n is a refractive index and h is the height of the transmission and r not is a radius of the earth tropospheric scattering propagation is of practical importance to very high frequency ultra high frequency and microwave frequencies in tropospheric scattering propagation this is the next type you now one is duct second thing what you are going to study is about scattering scattering so scattering propagation is highly useful in practical conditions where we have vh of high frequencies in tropospheric scattering propagation is the way propagate by scattering and reflecting from the common volume of the troposphere occupied by transmitting and receiving beams diagram which we have seen here tra transmission happens here this signal is transmitted it gets scattered this is a loss scattered and it comes back to certain waves reach back the earth so this propagation happens through scattering and diffraction this this is another thing two things we have studied one is tropospheric duct propagation and the other one is tropospheric scattering propagation next is the ionospheric propagation okay we have already seen the atmospheric layers so ionosphere is the upper portion of the atmosphere where we have contents of ions ions or charged particles 
when there is a charged particle there is a possibility of reflection right there is a repulsion happening so because it tends to be easily ionized by solar and cosmic radiation phenomena it is already ionized by solar or cosmic radiation phenomena the sky wave is often called the ionospheric wave and is radiated in an upward direction and returned to the earth at some distance location because of refraction from the ionosphere this form of propagation is relatively unaffected by the earth surface and can propagate signals over great distance usually high frequency bands is used for sky wave propagation the following in depth study of ionosphere and its effect on sky waves will help you better understand the nature of sky wave propagation so sky wave propagation is the high wave propagation is the conditions where you have the signals being propagated to a very high um, to a higher range so in this uh, ionospheric propagation there are certain definitions and there are certain derivations that you have to study one such definition is called as critical frequency you have to study the uh, relationship between critical frequency maximum usable frequency low uh, usable frequency and uh, virtual height and so on we have so so many concepts like this we need to make a note of all these um, definitions so what is critical frequency critical frequency is the highest frequency that can be reflected by an ionospheric layer when a signal strikes a vertical mean a normal uh, incident wave it is usually denoted by fc and is be given as fc is equal to 9 root n max where n max is the maximum electron density all of you next definition is maximum usable frequency which is the highest frequency which can be reflected back to the earth only at a specific angle of incidence rather than vertical okay so maximum usable frequency frequency muf is equal to fc critical frequency into secant theta i but theta e i is the specific angle of incidence rather rather than the vertical one it let us not consider the normal one right in the case of normal one what happens it becomes the same as the frequency critical frequency another one important definition is virtual height it is defined as the apparent height of an ionospheric layer estimated from time interval between the transmitted signal and the ionospheric echo at the receiver at a vertical distance provided the velocity of propagation is a velocity of light over the entire path is the height of an ionospheric layer estimated from the time interval between the transmitted signal and the ionospheric echo the reflection from the ionosphere at the receiver at vertical distance at the, sorry at vertical incidence provided the velocity of propagation is the velocity of the light over the entire path so these are basic de definitions now we have to study the uh, relationship between virtual height maximum usable frequency and critical frequency okay another one important point is about the earth's magnetic field or the uh, analysis of earth's magnetic effect of earth's magnetic field or earth's field in the uh, radio wave propagation these are the certain things that we need to study so thank you all thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much